Hey everyone. So last month I had a build for my veteran that prioritized being a frontliner and focused more on myself rather than my team. But since a lot of people had some really great suggestions for that build, I wanted to change some of the passives and give more direction on how we can instead be a leader and use our abilities for more team play. This build is going to be extremely good as an anchor point for the entire squad. You'll benefit by prioritizing all the specials and elites while being able to take care of any issue that pushes your team. Toughness is always an issue that I see when playing pub matches, and I hate having to lose teammates in any match. Most of the issues that I see whenever I look back on their operatives are that they lack ways to reduce damage as well as regain their toughness. With this build, you'll be able to control the progression with your team as long as they realize that you're what's keeping them alive. Let's start with my choice in the melee weapons. I went with the Mark III Sapper Shovel. Now this is my personal preference as I like having a way to take out the Horde easily as well as Crushers and Maulers with the foldable end. You can run any melee weapon that you enjoy. This doesn't really matter as much as our secondary, but it's nice to have a weapon for any occasion. The perks that I went with were damage to Flak and Carapist Armored Enemies. This is purely meant for the Bulwark and Crusher packs that come in every so often. As for my blessings, I went with Decimated for clearing out Horde enemies and Thrust to deal with any Ogren types and Maulers with the special action. Another great weapon that I'd recommend is the Mark III Power Sword as it holds a lot of power behind its cleave, and it can take care of Elites and Horde enemies with ease. But the real weapon of this build is going to be the Heavy Last Pistol. Now both pistols are fair game here, however I enjoy the Mark X as I prefer more damage over the rate of fire personally. But you can of course go with the Mark II as it still does the same job, only lacking in a little bit less damage, but it picks up and shots down range. Regardless though, the only perk that we must have on this weapon is going to be increased ranged critical strike chance. The other perk doesn't matter as much, but it'd be nice to either have crit chance or unyielding for boss damage and reapers. Now this weapon's already amazing at taking out ranged targets in just a few shots, but with the added blessings, it makes surviving much easier. For my blessings, I needed to have reassuringly accurate, and this will be our main source of regening toughness for not only ourselves, but the whole team. Another blessing that I like to use is Infernus, as it will usually kill a target that's pushing to get behind cover with its burn stacks. I did test this out recently, but you can run Dum Dum on it as well, but I still feel like Infernus is just a bit easier to control since it goes well with our weapon's perks. Burning targets has a higher chance to proc over just repeated hits. As for our curios, I would personally recommend running at least two toughness curios and a maximum health curios. All with buffs to toughness, toughness regen speed, some revive speed for your allies since we're going to be playing as a team player, and resistance to gunners as they will most likely give you the harder time over any other enemy. As I always say, you can run whatever you want here. However, I will say though, having a lot of toughness is great for us since we have passives that reflect in the amount of toughness we actually retain. At least two curios giving you a maximum of 17% toughness is recommended, and applying toughness boosts across all of your curios can help you so much if you wanted to swap out for a wound, stamina, or even a max health. Anyways, let's go over the talent tree. This time, I really wanted to revamp my Imperial Commando build into something more of a refined commander. Someone who can lead as well as protect. And after playing Zealot a ton, I grew to really enjoy leading the charge, as well as being a guardian angel for those that needed it. So that's what I'm trying to replicate with this build. I also wanted to be able to take care of any enemy in any situation, as well as make room for my teammates to shine while I command the flow of combat. This build won't make you stand out on the charge for damage, but it will provide your team with plenty of survivability. Let's start off with our main ability, Voice of Command. By now, most of you should understand this ability, but its immediate use of toughness regen along with the ability to stagger enemies around you is still unrivaled in team play. Along with this, I took duty and honor as I still find the overcharge to be strong enough to help assist with anyone testing my team's limits. The idea is to use your ability often enough to have no issues moving forward. Not only will the overcharge help, but for 15 seconds you'll have 50 additional toughness tacked on top for the remainder of the fight. For big swarms of elites, we have crack grenades to help ease up the herd. Remember that they can be magnetized to any armored enemy as well as unyielding enemies, so use them pretty often. With survivals as our aura, we will keep everyone including ourselves topped up on ammo. I do have other passives to help with ammo for this build, as I'll be using my last pistol almost always since it's what's boosting everyone's toughness. Since last time I used melee specialist to prioritize being a frontliner, this time I really wanted to fill the role of being a commander a bit more, so I went with focus target as my main keystone. This will place my tag over an enemy that I see and cause them to take up to 4% damage, but can grow with each stack applied to them to a maximum of 5 stacks. Now since we're going to be more focused on keeping the team alive, I opted to just take target down. This modifier replenishes everyone's toughness and stamina by 5% for each stack of focus target applied. Try to go for max stacks on a target whenever you can. I wanted my passives to represent this build's strengths, so I thought wisely about where to spend my points. 
I'll start with Born Leader. This passive allows every ally in Coherency to replenish 15% of my own toughness towards theirs. This pairs incredibly well with our last pistol as any critical kills that we get, our toughness will be spreading to our teammates. To make the most out of positioning, I opted to take Charismatic so my aura reaches as many of my allies as it can. Whenever they kill a specialist or elite, this also helps us regain ammo too. Close Order Drill is another passive that I felt was necessary to feel like an anchor point for the whole team. This provides you with a great amount of damage reduction as long as everyone's in coherency. With Confirmed Kill, we replenish 10% toughness with any elite or specialist kill, as well as an additional 20% toughness over 10 seconds. This again is why we want to stay with our team as much as we can. Any toughness that we regenerate, they regenerate too. While you watch this Auric Maelstrom mission play out, you'll see my team stick close to me as they all realize that they're getting a ton of toughness back solely from me. Since a lot of our use is coming from our ranged weapon, I felt that with Covering Fire we can assist anyone on the team by killing a surrounding enemy. With this passive, you just need to kill an enemy with a ranged attack, and it will transfer damage and toughness to a close ally, giving them more power in taking out whatever they're fighting. Again, I really want to rely heavily on our pistol with this build, so taking Deadshot seemed really obvious to me. This bumps our crit chance up and reduces Sway from a more accurate shot with the downside being of stamina loss. But with Focus Target, we can regain toughness and stamina back with each target marked, so keep that in mind. Demolition Stockpile allows us to use our crack grenades as often as we need, and it lets your teammates prioritize their needs over yours. This is almost mandatory since we want to be able to take out elites as easily as we can without feeling pressured. Fully Loaded was on the way down for another passive that I wanted, but I'm not going to complain about the 25% more ammo in my pistol. With Get Back in the Fight, I found that it's got a better use than Catch a Breath on its way down to my aura ability, especially on Damnation. This saves our stamina while also allowing us to get out of any nasty situation that we might be in. This always serves as a better option to reset ourselves in the heat of battle. Iron Will is a main passive of this build. This is what will push our survivability through the roof. Theoretically, if we have everyone in coherency and over 75% toughness, we can gain a total of 83% toughness damage reduction thanks to Close Order Drill's 33% tacked on with this 50%. We will always be regenerating toughness, so this should remain high regardless of the solid 50%. Since this build is focused to be helpful for everyone on the team, no matter their skill, leave no one behind almost seemed mandatory. This feels great because you can revive them fast and efficiently since this pass will protect you and them once they're up. It gives them a 33% damage reduction boost for 5 seconds as well as allowing you to keep advancing alongside them. Running Strikes is another amazing passive as it grants rending to all of my weapons, giving me even more damage on armored enemies. This helps both of my weapons out with penetrating through that bulky Ogren headplate. As I mentioned before, I have a lot of passives that actually help with our ammo consumption. So Shock Trooper might seem like a dumb pick, but again, we're going to be using our ranged weapon a ton. I went without this for a few games just to see its viability, and I hated having to re-up on my ammo after every fight. Besides, this allows you to keep shooting without having to reload because your crit chance is so high. And with this passive, you'll rarely need to find more than an ammo clip to top yourself off by the end of the match. And lastly, Tactical Awareness. This passive is our bread and butter for this build synergy, and this is why you'll need to prioritize specialists over any other enemy. With this passive, you'll knock 6 seconds off per specialist kill. This can be huge when playing on any mission, but for orc missions, it's incredibly useful. You'll see me use my ability a ton in this game, and it's usually to make sure that my team never goes into a fight without that overcharge. Now all of my operative modifiers grant me a ton of useful bonuses. I have boost in crit chance, health, range damage, reload speed, stamina, suppression, toughness, and toughness damage reduction. Overall, giving my veteran a lot of resources and plenty of ways to survive and help my team. The trouble I see a lot when I'm playing in public matches is the lack of team morale and camaraderie. People kick others when they're downed, and I think people forget that this is a team-oriented game. I try to form my builds around being a team player, as well as showing that damage isn't everything. This build can help anyone in any difficulty of the game, so if you're having trouble with the hardest content in the game, give this build a try. A lot of my time and energy goes into making these builds, and I hope you all get to try them out and enjoy them for yourself. I really owe it to all of you that support me here on YouTube, and to my loyal viewers who leave me tons of positivity in the comments. And most of all, to my channel members, thank you so much for joining the channel and giving me the encouragement that I need to keep my videos going. Consider joining the channel if you too would like to see your name as a producer in my videos here on YouTube. Anyways, I'm going to go start on my next build for you all, but in case you forgot, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you all again next week. Take care of yourself and enjoy the rest of the match.
kind of like it down here. Reminds me of my youth. Lord Margrave has never cared for those he can't see. The blindness of rank. With the right guidance, this place might be returned to life once again.
Station. There's a code for this too. Ranger, oh, you've got a 